It's gaming time. So last time we had a video talking about how 2025 is the best year to get onto gaming on Linux. But of course, people were keen to get some tips and tricks in order to get themselves started. So this is what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to give you 10 tips for improving your gaming experience on Linux. Obviously, this goes to people that are not as familiar with the OS. So if you are an Arc Giga Chad, please be patient. Help out in the comments. Let people know what other tips you have for them so that they can enjoy their Linux journey. We're going to start off with one that might seem rather obvious, but number one, choose a gaming friendly Linux distro. Yes. There's a lot of distributions out there for Linux. And it's important if you're going to be gaming that you choose the right one. And so if you're a new user and you're not quite as familiar with how the operating system works and you need a little bit more handholding, then you're really good starting off with Ubuntu or an Ubuntu based distro like Pop OS. It's a popular choice because it's stable and has wide support. Bolivie even targets Ubuntu for Steam support. But if you're slightly more familiar with Linux and you want a more out-of-the-box gaming experience, consider a specialized distro like Nobara, which is Fedora-based, or Apache OS, which comes with pre-tuned gaming optimizations, and it's based on Arc. These provide updated kernels. They have drivers and settings to maximize your game performance from the very start. Choose the one that fits your comfort level. Number two, keep your system and drivers updated. I know that may seem like a no-brainer, but it can be a hassle sometimes to figure that out. So ensuring you have the latest system updates and GPU drivers is critical for performance and compatibility on Linux. Newer games often require cutting-edge graphic drivers not found in older distro releases. Uh, here's the thing. For NVIDIA GPUs, you have to install the latest proprietary drivers. A lot of these OS distributions like Ubuntu will actually have installers for you to use. And the reason for that being is that for NVIDIA graphics cards, the proprietary drivers are just going to be the ones that work the best. However, now if you're an AMD enjoyer, you can go for the latest Mesa drivers, which are third party drivers, because those have a lot more tweaks done to them and they function rather well for AMD graphics cards. Now, regardless of the distro that you pick, make sure that 32 bit libraries are enabled and installed in any games whether they be on One or Proton, need the 32-bit components to run. Keeping your OS drivers current, including kernel updates, will provide performance improvements and bug fixes. Number three, enable Steam Play, aka Proton, for Windows games. Proton is a BIOS compatibility layer forked from Wine that allows Windows-only games to run on Linux via Steam. Designed to work with a minimal hassle. In fact, Proton requires little to no manual configuration for most games. You go to Steam settings, you go enable Steam Play for all titles, and you select the Proton version that you want to use. This will let you install and play Windows games as if they were native. For each game, you can experiment with different versions if needed. Community builds like Proton GE often include patches for newer or stubborn games. Finally, it's important that you consult ProtonDB, Proton Database. It's a community database of reports to see what game specific tips and tricks you need to know. And will often tell you how well that game is working on their Proton. And you'll even find launch options and Proton configuration tweaks that improve the game's compatibility. Don't forget that one neat thing you can do is on Steam, you can actually add a non-Steam game and in that regard, add a game that's outside of the Steam launcher so that it runs through Steam and it can benefit from the Proton to make it run. Number four, install and use Lutris for non-Steam games. Not all games are on Steam, although we just talked about a little workaround. And this is where Lutris shines. Lutris is an open source gaming platform for Linux it helps you install and manage games in a unified library. It supports every type of game, native Unix titles, Windows games, emulators for retro consoles, and web browser games. With Lutris, you can connect your accounts from services as well, like good old games or Epic games, and use community-provided install scripts that automatically set up required Wine version, Proton configurations, DX, VK, etc. for each game. For example, you can install a game from Battle.net, Origin EA or Ubisoft Connect with one click on a Lutris script. It will download the game, 
if you own it, and apply all the necessary tweaks. This saves you the hassle of manual configuration so you can start playing without the hassle of setting up your game. It just keeps all these games organized in one place and you can even launch them through Steam if you want. Lutra says option to add its games to Steam for overlay and controller support. Number five, use bottles for isolated wine environments. Bottles is another excellent tool. I can't go without it. It focuses on managing wine prefixes, which is basically Windows environments, in a user-friendly way. Bottles makes it easy to run Windows software and games on Linux via Wine through a polished interface. It uses the concept of bottles, separate containers for each app and game, with pre-configured environments, which are basically presets that come with appropriate settings, libraries, dependencies, all bundled together. Bottles will automatically download the needed Wine or Proton version. It will take care of the DirectX or Vulkan version that you need, and it will also look for common dependencies via its built-in managers. This isolation means each game can have its own wine settings and tweaks without interfering with the others. It's great for avoiding conflicts. Bottles also provides an easy way to set up environment variables, toggle performance tweaks like e-sync and f-sync, tweak DLL overdrives, enable overlays, and so much more. In short, prefer Lutris if it's for a huge library of scripts and launchers, like for example, Battle.net. But if a particular game doesn't have a Lutris script, or you need some fine grain control, Bottles is a go-to solution, easy to manage and run Windows games in their own optimized kind of container. Number six, enable Feral Game Mode for performance. Now what is game mode you ask? Game mode is a small system daemon by Feral Interactive that can automatically apply performance optimizations while your games are running. In simple terms, game mode will temporarily crank your CPU governor to performance mode for higher clock speed. It will adjust I.O. priorities and apply other tweaks to give the game priority on your system. Many Linux games and launchers like Lutris can auto-detect and use game mode if it's installed. On Ubuntu and other popular distros, you can install it via the Packet Manager. Once installed, it's as simple as going to your Steam launch options for that particular game and adding in the command game mode run percentage command. Or in Lutris check, Enable Feral Game Mode in the game system option. This ensures that whenever the game runs, your system is in a high performance state. It's a simple way to squeeze out more FPS and avoid background processes stealing resources while gaming. Although be careful using this if you're also streaming or doing any other kind of recording at the same time. Number seven, ensure Vulkan compatibility. Modern Linux gaming relies heavily on Vulkan, so make sure that your system is Vulkan ready. DXVK and VKD3D Proton, don't worry about those names. They're basically the translation layers for Proton and Wine that are used so that DirectX games are translated into Vulkan. DXVK handles anything that's DirectX 9, 10, or 11 by implementing those APIs on top of Vulkan. And VKD3D basically does the same for DirectX 12 on Vulkan. What this means for you is you install your GPU's Vulkan drivers. For NVIDIA, it's the proprietary drivers. For Intel, you have to make sure you have the Mesa equivalent installed. But for most gaming distros, you will have this by default, but double check, especially if you install drivers manually. With Vulkan properly set up, Protona will automatically use these by default, yielding a huge performance and compatibility gain over old OpenGL-based Wine graphics. In Lutris, make sure that DXVK or VKD3D is enabled in the game's runner options for any Windows games. This allows even demanding DirectX 11 or 12 titles to run very smoothly on Linux. In general, uh, prefer Vulkan or OpenGL rendering in games when available as Linux drivers are optimized for those. If a game offers Vulkan mode, use it. By keeping these translation layers updated, you'll maximize the range of games that run well on your system. Trust me on that. Number eight, set up emulators for console games. Linux is a great platform for emulation. Play your console and retro games, install native Linux emulators, or use front-end ones like RetroArch. Many popular emulators have Linux versions. There's Dolphin, PCX2, and Yuzu, just to name a few. They all run on Linux. You can install these through your distros package manager or as flat packs. And RetroArch, which is a unified interface for many emulators, is even available on Steam, making it easy to manage your ROM library with a gamepad-friendly UI. You can also integrate emulated games into Lutris 
Lutra supports adding games with an emulator of your choice so that your emulators and PC games live in one library. This means that you could launch, for example, in a Super Nintendo game on the same Lutris menu or Steam shortcuts as your other games. Take advantage of these tools to enjoy indie classics and console exclusives. Performance is often excellent. In some cases, it's even better than on Windows due to Linux's low overhead and emulator optimizations. Number nine, unify your game libraries and configure controllers. Talked a little bit about this during the Steam Play section, but there's an added component to this. For convenience, try to bring all your games into a single launcher or interface. Like we talked about, Steam allows you to add a non-Steam game to your library. And this isn't just beneficiary because of the Proton use, there is an added component. You can even add your Lutris games or emulator apps in here, and then lets you launch them through your Steam's big picture or desktop mode with full overlay support. This also lets you enable Steam input for those games, which is a key feature as Steam's controller support is excellent, letting you use Xbox, PlayStation, Switch Pro, and other controllers with customizable mappings. In fact, most controllers work plug and play on Linux nowadays. The kernel's built-in drivers make devices like the Xbox 360 and Xbox One controller just work out of the box. Similarly, if you're using Sony DualShock 4 or 5, or even the Switch controllers, they're supported via generic gamepad drivers or Bluetooth. For any game launched through Steam or Lutris, you can usually configure the controller layout. If a game doesn't natively detect your controller, Steam can pretend it's an Xbox controller via Steam input, a lifesaver for games with no direct input support. Lastly, if you're playing older titles or emulators outside of Steam, you might consider community tools like Anti Micro X or Joy2 Key to map controller inputs to keyboard and mouse. But in many cases, this actually won't be that necessary. Overall, Linux is excellent controller support. Just be sure to enable the controller configurations and settings, you'll be good to go. And finally, number 10, explore advanced tweaks. Once you have the basics covered, you can experiment with advanced optimizations to squeeze out extra performance. Some users opt for gaming optimized kernels such as Xanmod or Licorix on Debian and Ubuntu based systems. These kernels include scheduler tweaks, GPU optimizations, and the latest patches. In fact, certain distros, like we talked about, like Novara or even Kachi OS, come with such kernel tweaks and drivers pre-applied, which is one reason they often show excellent gaming performance. Using low latency or optimized kernel can reduce input lag and improve frame rates slightly, but results can vary. If your current setup is stable, treat this as optional. There are other tweaks like adjusting your CPU governor or power profiles, among other things, but these start getting into the intermediary to advanced territory, so we won't cover it in this specific video. By following these tips, you'll set up a gaming Linux environment that can handle AAA blockbuster indie gems and classic console titles alike. Remember, always use all the great tools that you have at your disposal, and of course, your system updated. And like I said before, if you have more tips for people to enjoy gaming on Linux, make sure to drop it in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. My name is Skeletal. The H is silent like your machine will be when it's performing so great playing games at 4K.